Well, uh, good morning, everyone. At least it's morning for me. Uh, how's everybody doing? Can you hear me okay? I'm about to get started here. I had a few little technical hiccups right before I was about to start. And I'm just checking one more thing here. Oh boy, okay, hold on. We're gonna turn on this X. And three, two, one. Ah, good morning, oh my, oh my, good morning, hello. Uh, happy Sunday on the coding train. Uh, yes, you hear me, okay. I um, have a little screen here where I'm looking at the chat. I, I'm uh, strangely, uh, uh, or, or I think as usual, somewhat under uh, prepared here, but I'm happy to be here live with you. I have, um, this stream will go until approximately 12 noon Eastern, which is an hour and 53 minutes from now. Uh, the first question that I have for you, please let me know in the chat where you are watching from. One of my favorite things about hosting the coding train here on YouTube is discovering so many viewers from all over the world. Um, I have this desire maybe uh, at some point for a future time, maybe if I retire from my uh, teaching job at NYU, I would like to travel the world and visit every single one of you. There's so many places I have never been. Uh, and so, um, let me know where you're watching from. Um, Finland is in the house. You know, my son, uh, that is oddly enough, one of his number one, I mean, maybe it's not odd. <laughs> that is where he always says like, let's go to Finland. When we talk about where are we going to go on vacation this year? <laughs> Finland, um, Charlotte, North Carolina, Germany, Nepal, Korea, India, Strasbourg, Hungary, Algeria, Sweden, Morocco. Germany, Brazil, Mexico, California. It's snowing. Mikwuk Village, California. Jeff, that sounds... Uh, where in California is that? Algeria, Nairobi, Kenya. This is incredible. See, this is why I asked the question. Um, this is one of the things that um, is just wonderful about the community is how global it is. Um, so many different experiences and backgrounds and points of view that you all bring and I see Loic is coming from France. Whirlwind says Antarctica. I would like to believe that that's true. And I don't mean to be skeptical, uh, <laughs> but I wonder. Uh, Lithuania. Lithuania is where my well. Thank you, Munzir from Syria. Uh, thank you for that support. Um, Lithuania is where my grandfather um, was from. Uh, interestingly enough. Okay. Um, my All of my grandparents are immigrants to the U.S., mostly from Eastern Europe areas. Uh, I could talk about that if people are interested at some point. Um, uh, Whirlwind was joking. Okay, thanks for that clarification. But if there's a scientist holed up in a some type of lab in Antarctica with the coding train on, well, that would be it. I would be done. End the scene. Coding train is over. Um, close to Yosemite. Interesting. Wonderful. So the other important piece of information that I would like to know from all of you is how is my audio? Um, I have been working hard to update drivers, fix settings. I have a empty room, which is very echoey. I have a, a nice high quality lav mic here, which I could get really close to and speak into. Um, but um, uh, it's not, this room is not sound treated, but I'm using NVIDIA Broadcast, which is a piece of software I can run on the streaming PC, uses the graphics card and a machine learning model to remove the reverb. So um, I'm curious how that sounds. In the past, uh, it has, uh, there, there has been glitching, clicking and popping. So let me know if you hear that. Great, thanks everyone. Um, so I've, I've got a pretty good close uh, look on the chat here. Uh, I've got my monitor over here so I can see what I'm doing. Let's, yes, uh, <laughs> and some of you, I know Deepom made an, a comment here in the Discord. 
uh, around uh, that there was not the deafening whistle in the opening animation. I muted the audio that is a part of that video. I'll have to still some glitching. Uh, let me know if other people hear the glitching. Oh, occasional click. I don't understand. So this is really odd. Let's think about this. Let me just explain something to you. I spent a couple days ago, hours in this room, recording the video with exact, recording a video. Um, you can see what is coming next on the coding train by looking at this whiteboard here. So I spent hours in this room recording the next coding challenge with the echo reduction on, not a single click or pop in the audio. And suddenly when I come here to stream live, it's all of a sudden back. Why would that be? The one thing that is different, which kind of makes no sense to me, is I'm running. Uh, when I was recording that coding challenge, I wasn't actually live streaming. I didn't have, I don't have, the, didn't have the soundboard hooked up. Why should that matter though? I was running a different instance of OBS because I run multiple instances of OBS on my computer. Uh, one has a bunch of settings for recording to disk. One, one has a bunch of settings for live streaming. What could it be? Very frustrating. Yeah, everyone's tough. Okay, so you don't have to tell me anymore, I'm aware. So the question is, uh, I'm gonna turn off the echo reduction and you can all tell me which is better. Very frustrating. So I thought I was good. Hi, yeah, so let's just turn it off for a second. Um, all right, my audio is now without the crackling. Uh, so a bunch of good comments. One is 2001, Hearn says GPU is doing more work. So some hardware bug is getting triggered. That's possible. Do you need multiple instances of OBS instead of just multiple profiles? Probably could be done with multiple profiles, but I set it up this way a while ago. Sometimes I actually run both instances of OBS at the same time because <laughs> I'm trying to record different things and do different things. Again, probably unnecessary, but that's my setup. Um, it's definitely the cosmic rays, yeah. So I think probably the echo is uh, better than the glitching. So I'm gonna just stick with the um, echoing now. It's also very cold. I'm, I'm quite frustrated <laughs> with the world right now <laughs> because it's my, this week, it's over now, last week was my uh, spring break from NYU where I uh, have my teaching job and I, I, I had intended to use last week. Well, I, and in fact, I sort of did. So let's talk about uh, some goals that I have. I'd like to put these out there. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I I'm looking at the chat and thinking about too many things. First of all, welcome. It seems like looking at the chat, most of you are familiar with the coding train, but I expect there might be some new viewers there. Uh, out there, uh, maybe you're a little quieter. If you are new, if you've never watched The Coding Dream before, but you somehow wandered in here, please say hello in the chat. I would like to know. I would like to know where you came from. How did you find this? Um, but The Coding Train is a YouTube channel uh, where I uh, upload uh, tutorials around learning to code in the so-called creative coding space. So a lot of graphics and animation, sometimes working with text, but creative exploratory projects, um, a lot of physics simulation, um, some machine learning topics, a lot of beginner friendly tutorials, the kind of bread and butter of the coding train, if you will, are these coding challenges. Marzerk says, first time in the live stream. Um, so, um, my goal for 2024 <laughs> is two new videos per month, coding challenges, uh, and, uh, as well as at least one live stream per month. So I was really all set 
to catch up. I was like, spring break, I'm gonna record a video, I'm gonna do a live stream. Um, but uh, I didn't, it, last week, was, it just like became so busy, I barely got to anything. But I did record the next coding challenge, sneak preview of what is left over on the whiteboard here. Uh, this video will come out, I want it to come out in March because then I would have gotten my two videos out in March, but more likely it'll be early April, not April 1st. I don't have an April Fool's Day idea. A few bunch of years ago, I was like, ah, I got this idea for an April Fool's video. I'm going to do a kind of parody of an old 1980s Saturday Night Live sketch. <laughs> and I uploaded it to YouTube and nobody watched it. Small number of people watched it. Um, so, oh, and NNN says, recently admitted to ITP for fall 2024. Uh, very excited to meet you uh, this fall, NNN. That's wonderful. Yes, yeah, so if those of you aren't aware, uh, my, um, my day job, if you will, is teaching at a program called ITP, an IMA in New York, New York City, in Brooklyn, New York. Actually, it's a, a par program at Tisch School of the Arts, uh, New York University. Soft body physics. Crashing Thunder says I watched it. Okay, good. So one person in the chat watched my April Fool's video. Anyway, it's supposed to be spring break. It's literally 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Freezing in this room. I had the heater cranked up, but the heater is very loud. So I like to turn it off when I'm streaming. We'll see. I might have to turn it on a little bit because I'm quite cold. I'm going to do a little jogging here to warm up. Some jumping jacks. Uh, um, but so I'm very disappointed with my spring break, uh, which is just freezing. I have this little cushion that I stand on. I'm just wearing socks though. I should probably put on shoes. My toes are getting cold. <laughs> oh no. All right. So I got to get a hop to it. So what's going to happen today? I have a list of things. Uh, look at me. So organized for this live stream. I, uh, let me get, let me give you the agenda real quick. Just want to tell people about ShiftBot in case you aren't aware of it. I want to talk about the passenger showcase and the recent coding challenges I've released um, and how I am embarking. Uh, um, there's another train riding along Instagram. So I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about Discord updates that are going on. I already talked about my monthly goals and then I have a project to start working on. So the project, I'll just get to the project. Uh, more recently, um, I used to, more recently I've been using these live streams to try to work through uh, different kinds of projects, uh, a lot focused on working with different kinds of language models and seeing what kind of shenanigans and experiments I can get up to. So I have a project and I am soliciting for anyone who's interested, this project, it needs to be completed by April 14th. I'll talk about what's happening on April 14th. Uh, I, I, honestly, I need to complete it like with a week before so I can practice with it. <laughs> um, and uh, it's going to be open source on GitHub, so anybody who wants to contribute and help me make this thing, uh, you're, you're, you're invited. Okay. So, um, first thing on my agenda, I'm just going to briefly mention it. Uh, if you hadn't seen, I've been, oh, you don't see my screen. Uh, if you hadn't seen this, I've been working with uh, some researchers at Google. Uh, experimenting with their uh, Gemini uh, language models, and I have made uh, with them this goofy little uh, P5JS helper chatbot. I don't know why it's not showing up. I got maybe I got to turn it on. Come on, Shiftbot, where are you? There you are. This little come on, wake up. You're very blurry and tired. There you go. There you go. Okay, this is uh, Shiftbot here in the corner, uh, who's a friendly little chatbot who um, you can ask questions to like, um, what will be the next coding challenge on the coding train? Let's see if ShiftBot can recognize. I mean, I just realized that I actually wrote what the coding challenge is on the top there. So not too much of a mystery here, but let's press enter and see what we get. Ah, Peter Farrell, fellow notes. Oh, oh, I should update about the nature of codebook. Uh, that's a good thing to add to my list. Uh, nature of code. I got, uh, I want to mention that plug. I am a robot and don't have access to that information, but I can tell, look, Shiftbot knows what's on my agenda. This is perfect. 
because I need this link because I'm going to talk about the Discord. Thank you, Shiftbot. So anyway, I did a whole stream where I played around with the Shiftbot. There's lots to say about it, but I just wanted to, uh, what I'm really looking for and what my friends at Google are looking for is feedback and testing of it. Um, I have heard from so many people that it's an ex uh, that they're interested and um, perhaps even intrigued uh, to see this uh, experiment in a kind of custom bespoke <laughs> chatbot assistant for creative coding. Um, and people are really interested in asking about how it was made and all sorts of questions. But what I haven't really heard in, is about people using it. So I know that it's not available. You have to join the waitlist in certain countries. You can't get it. But if please join the waitlist. Uh, if you have access to it, you should have gotten an email with like a, uh, there, I think you can write to, I, I have to find the email. There's like a, a, a support email, like support at shiftbot with Google. I don't know, somebody, there's an email you can write to with your feedback. Uh, and so please, please do that. Um, Astro Penguin writes, did you become the coolest dad now that you are a robot? No, my kids have zero interest in this. So like, the, like the, the eye rolling is at like the top height, the, 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 the height of their eye rolling powers. My teenage children are like, uh-huh, yeah, uh, cool, robot, right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no. <laughs> you might think that I'm cool. I, uh, and nobody in my family is. Uh, they, they know me as just like the loser that I am. That, that was too harsh. I'm just, you know. Okay, uh, <clears throat> what else do I want to say? All right, so I talked about that. Let me just go right to Nature of Code. Um, uh, so uh, I'm going to go to natureofcode.com. Okay, so this is my uh, book um, called Nature of Code. Um, you know, the. Many of you might be familiar with it. Uh, Natureofcode.com, you can read everything about it, but uh, you can read all, you read the entire thing, it's done. I mean, actually finished. The website is not finished. So this is a, mostly a placeholder design for the website. Uh, hopefully in the next few months, there'll be a whole new uh, website design with some more features and different things. Um, but this, this is a, uh, a big <laughs> expensive project that I worked on. And um, I would, if you're interested, oh, and they, you can uh, actually buy the, the hard cover and use the coupon code pre-order to get 25% off. Oh, download, oh, look at this. Oh, cool, oh, look at these. Now, this is cool. I did, this is new on there, look at this. Some sample pages. This, I love this page. So this is one of the uh, pages from the neural network chapter where I'm talking about a neural network that could be trained to predict the energy use of a home based on different uh, properties. And you can see this nice little illustration by Zana Marsh of showing like a single family home, a large apartment building. So, um, and I guess we can download chapter seven um, here for free, that's cool. So please, if you're interested uh, um, in physical books, uh, you can pre-order this um, today wherever books are sold as well as on the note. I think you'll get the, I think this 25% off is only available from the No Starch website. I have gotten a lot of messages from people saying, oh, the shipping is like, you know, too much or whatever. So um, if, um, uh, the, the book will be sold internationally through all the usual channels. So if you're looking at this and you're like, I can't get it in my country, just wait. Uh, it'll probably be available through a local uh, retailer um, at some point, but maybe it just isn't for pre-order just yet. Okay, so I mentioned that. Uh, what else? All right, let's talk about something that is going on now. Uh, I am going to take the next few months to experiment a bit more with uh, the Instagram platform. Uh, Karen, who is a contributor to P5JS, is helping me with Instagram, and we are launching uh, uh, um, an initiative to feature passenger showcase projects on Instagram. So if you go to, uh, you, if you follow uh, The Coding Train on Instagram at the.coding.com, um, if you, Oh yeah, yes, Peter, so 
hold on a second. I'm noticing this comment in the chat from Peter saying, book frequently books are counterfeit. So I haven't investigated this. This is a huge issue happening right now. I've um, been listening to some podcasts from different authors who have been lamenting the fact that there are a lot of these AI generated books, uh, self-published books, which, which again, self, the self-publishing, there's something, that is a good thing. Uh, Nature of Code was originally self-published. I support and encourage people to self-publish, but the, the ability to publish quickly and easily and the ability to use generative AI has caused this issue with um, you know, counterfeit, plagiarized, or uh, fake books. And even these things like I've heard that a lot of popular books will then have these workbooks, AI-generated workbooks, which are not made by the author, but Amazon's algorithms will bundle them together anyway. So if anybody sees um, any counterfeit or uh, fake versions of the nature of code out there, Feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to I'll try to do something about that if I can. The book is licensed under Creative, Co uh, Creative Commons. So the book has a very permissive open source license um, and you can uh, read the entire thing for free online. There's no reason. The only thing you're not allowed to do is resell it. Uh, I am the only person who can, uh, no starch really, uh, because I, I, I'm working with them as the publisher who can sell it uh, commercially. Also, a lot of people have contacted me about doing a translation of The Nature of Code. I'm actually... Uh, uh, oh, uh, now is the time to ask me about that. So maybe write to daniel at thecodingtrain.com if you're interested in that. Um, I, I'm just going to pass you along to somebody else because I'm not going to be managing that process, but I would love the book to be translated into as many languages as possible and conceivably that is something that i could do on the website as well that I, if it's on they'll be doing that myself but i'm more thinking about translations of the print book but maybe i should be thinking the other way around anyway back to instagram i want to get to working on this project it's already 10 30. i'm getting very 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 cold <laughs> i had to get, do some running in place here i need one of those i, I should get like a, a treadmill here and i could just live stream while walking on the treadmill okay so um um, so every two, twice a month, every two weeks, you will find a post on Instagram that is highlighting a coding challenge. Uh, most recently, we highlighted the Southern Automata coding challenge, number 179. Um, and it is a, uh, when we highlight it, it's a call for people to submit their projects to the passenger showcase. So if you go to thecodingtrain.com, and you go under community, under showcase, you can see here, these are all the projects that people have submitted. And beyond just submitting them, the point of this is for you also to look at and explore them. Because my videos just show you the nuts and bolts of a particular concept or algorithm without a lot of kind of creative interpretation. And it is my hope that you, the viewers, will learn something from those videos and inspire you to make your own version. And then the showcase is a place for people to share those back and look at them. So um, under guides, under passenger showcase guide, there is a form here, and I realize I'm kind of standing in front of it, uh, where you can submit your work. Um, if you go to any particular video, I'll go to the Wolfram one. Um, then you can also see the, whoops, I don't know what's going on there. You can see the, uh, projects that are submitted for the Wolfram CA here. So, um, uh, so please, um, when you see the announcement on Instagram, if you hadn't already watched the video, it's a chance for you to go back and watch it. Uh, and then you can submit. Then what we do, and it, uh, you know, obviously, we're, unfortunately, we're not able to share everyone's project, uh, but picking a selection of them, you can see them here. Then um, uh, 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 the, now this is a, a selection of them that have been shared. Uh, here's a nice collage of them. And then um, I'll just show you. So this is the Wolfram Elementary CA rings. I love this interpretation of taking the Wolfram CA, but uh, rendering it in a radial pattern. Uh, Kathy here made a version of the Wolfram CA with these swirly designs that I absolutely love. Um, this is a version of it uh, with a different kind of rule that I think you could find if you, that I didn't explore in the video itself, but um, Coral has explored it. Uh, and then this from Greg Kaisman. I wonder, can I get the audio here? Hold on, I have to turn this on. 
this is wild to me. It's basically rendering the Wolfram CA and each cell is a note. And then, so it's, the Wolfram CA is playing music. Really, really incredible. Okay. Uh, and uh, here's one with uh, adjustable parameters from Ruben King and uh, a 3D one from Khan HF NGZ. So the other thing is when you are, you don't have to have an Instagram account, not at all required, but it's not, if you happen to, it's nice for us to be able to tag you. So when you go to the forum, I've lost where it is, uh, guides, passenger showcase guide, um, here, um, this is where if you enter your Instagram handle in here, then we'll be able to, uh, if we're able to feature it on Instagram, be able to tag you for that. But that is um, not at all um, required. I also, by the way, you know, you, there is this little box here. In the, in the off chance you're submitting it to the website, but you wouldn't want us to feature it somewhere else, um, you can check that box. Uh, by private, by the way, I, I have a bad habit of trying to put train buns everywhere in my materials. If that bothers you, then uh, my apologies. Okay, so I am probably, so the, um, this literally just got posted yesterday. Um, I think that for the next uh, Instagram passenger showcase feature, I am going to feature uh, showcase projects from, um, from uh, of the Apollonian gasket. So now is your chance to get your Apollonian gasket uh, projects in. I wanted to look at this one just live though. Did I, I can't believe I didn't think to do this during my actual coding challenge video itself. I don't know why this isn't loading yet, okay. So what I love about this particular one is how it is uh, the the actual original orient. So first of all, what what am I even talking about? If you missed it, it wasn't one of my more um, th this the Apollonian gasket video, which is this particular fractal pattern, uh, was one of the lower viewed challenges in recent months. The sand falling one has you know exploded, probably had ten times the amount of views. I don't know why I'm talking about this. It's not that important, but. Um, uh, uh, my most recent coding challenge is the Apollonian gasket. It is a fractal pattern where circles are placed and then that are mutually tangent to each other. And then smaller circles are placed mutually tangent to those and so on and so forth. And you can see a beautiful rendering here in Trevor Sargent's uh, passenger showcase submission. Um, there's lots of this uh, on some level, and I say this in the video, to me, this is, uh, you know, if you wanted to learn about how to do recursive fractal patterns, uh, this is what I cover in chapter eight of The Nature of Code. And in fact, if I scroll down, you would find, uh, you know, a pattern like this, which looks quite similar to the Apollonian gasket in the sense that it's circles inside of circles inside of circles. This particular pattern right here is this much code. I don't know, what's that, 15, 20 lines of code, one recursive function, very basic idea. And uh, this is, uh, anyway, there's some bugs in the way that the comments are rendered here on the website. But regardless of that, I kind of thought, oh, the Apollonian gasket will be not so, uh, will be like this, but maybe a bit more sophisticated. It turns out that the Apollonian gasket fractal involves quite a bit of uh, pun intended here, complex math, specifically around complex numbers. That's why the video ended up being an hour long. But if you're interested, I would suggest please go back and watch that video. What I love about this one here is the fact that the interaction, as you move the mouse around, you are arranging the original, uh, pl the placement of the original circles. And I think this is very clever. I love kind of going off to the edge and seeing these, uh, like this like crescent moon uh, kind of pattern here. Just uh, really nice. I, the grayscale looks like is mapped also to the original orientation. So anyway, this is a really, really terrific interpretation. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I look forward to sharing it on Instagram. Uh, yes, circle inversions. Oh, yeah, this is circle inversions. It's related to that. Is there, I didn't, I actually not have not seen this number file video that Pradeep is referencing in the chat. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about 
uh, around the passenger showcase. One thing I'll mention is when you submit the form, it creates a pull request here. And uh, I think the, this is a pull request from, maybe you're in the chat, uh, the kid. Um, this is your uh, Angry Birds uh, uh, coding challenge submission, which I have yet to look at. So this is my fault. It takes me sometimes like a week to get to reviewing these pull requests and merging them, but I will be I will make sure to do that uh, after the live uh, stream today. But we can see there are a bunch. There's one actually Apollonian gasket one. Oh, this is another. Ah, this is actually the one I was looking for. I just didn't merge it yet. There are two Trevors and also Omars. So this also uses the mouse. And look at it. Ah, this also like the original orientation is animating in this rotating way. This is wild. So this is also, this is what I was actually thinking of when I was looking at Trevor's. Uh, I just hadn't merged this one yet. So this is not on the website yet because if it's in the pull request uh, queue, then, so it does take some time for it to appear. appear. We do moderate uh, to make sure, you know, there's no inappropriate materials in the coding challenges. And also I, this, you know, I like to look at all of them. So, you know, I don't read every comment on YouTube. I don't read every chat message in the live stream, but I look at, every single passenger showcase a submission. I should be so lucky to have so many that I can't look at them all anymore. But, um, uh, we, uh, but that's not the current state. Okay, so that is me talking about, oh, I'm very cold, the showcase. Uh, <laughs> I might just turn the heater on, okay, everybody? Uh, <clears throat> won't bother you so much, and it, uh, but let's see if I can go a little longer without it. <clears throat> okay, so let me close some windows here. Let's talk about Discord. Oh. So the, the, the primary platform for the coding train is YouTube, uh, as well as Nebula. I should mention Nebula. Don't forget about Nebula. So uh, Nebula, if you go to uh, go.nebula.tv slash coding train, I think is the link. Yeah. So um, Nebula is a wonderful independent streaming platform. I really want, um, I have the opportunity to pitch a Nebula original, which could be a different, something different than what I usually do on the coding train. I'm still looking for an idea. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, the Nebula and YouTube are the primary platforms uh, for the coding train. Um, but the, I would say the second most important platform for the coding train right now is the Discord. So again, if you go to thecodingtrain.com, and the other thing, nobody responded to me here, but I'm trying to decide. I recently, let me go to the website. I posted an issue about this. So if anybody has thoughts about this, please uh, pipe in. But I recently was able to get, uh, when I originally was creating the Coding Train website, codingtrain.com was not available. It recently came up available. I had to spend $300 on it, which is maybe, maybe I overpaid, I don't know. But I feel like it's there, I gotta buy it. 300 is not like insane, so let me just get it. Um, so, uh, so I have that domain now and I'm trying to decide, right now if you go to just coding, codingtrain.com, it will just redirect you to thecodingtrain.com. But I'm wondering if I should actually move the whole site to codingtrain.com. If you have thoughts on that, um, let me know. That's not the important thing here. Uh, but the important thing is here is if you go to thecodingtrain.com slash discord, that will take you to this page, uh, which gives you all the information about the discord. You can see we are 10,000 plus members strong. Apparently there's 2000 members online. This is a place where you can get help with your code. Um, you can, uh, connect with other people in the community. You can share what you're making. You can get notifications from me, which is what I'm gonna talk about. So you can join the server, and I am going to go into the server now and look at some things that are new. Okay, so first of all, uh, noobdev54, who I think is in the chat. Oh, and Nicole is there. Hi, Nicole, uh, I, have the, I have the chat here. Um, Woo, I'm cold. 314 people live. Hi, people live. Okay, I gotta turn the heat. What do you think? I should turn the heater on probably, right? Why is it so cold? It's supposed to be spring break now. I feed my dog Gloria Pickle outside 
because if I feed her inside, she often, we have cats, she tries to eat the cat food. So last night it rained overnight. I went to get Gloria's bowl, which I had left outside, and the bowl was a block of ice. It was full of completely frozen water. <clears throat> okay. Uh, um, so what am I talking about here? Ah, yes. Yeah, so Noob Deb, thank you. So uh, uh, Kobe, that many of you might know uh, from the Discord, was the manager of the Discord for many years. Thank you, Kobe, for your incredible service to the coding trade community. Uh, uh, Kobe has moved on from managing the Coding Train Discord uh, onto new opportunities and adventures, and NoobDev54 has now taken it over. So one is uh, NoobDev has been doing a lot of work to reorganize the channels, rename roles. Um, if you have ideas and things you'd like in the, the Discord, please uh, send them to NoobDev. Um, and also you can always tag at station manager. That is the group of moderators, of volunteer moderators. If anybody would like to volunteer to help moderate the coding train community in Discord and on YouTube, uh, you know, that there may be a possibility for us to add more moderators as well. Um, David Smith asked, what languages are discussed on the Discord? Well, there's no restriction. I assume you're talking about programming languages. There's no restriction as to what languages uh, you can or cannot discuss. I would say because I'm tending to use processing and P5.js and uh, Node.js and different creative coding frameworks, that's kind of what you, what I see more people talking about, but I can go poke around the channels. There's different, uh, you know, people are talking about other things and you're, you're welcome to. Okay, so um, what do I want to say? The here is, so when you join the coding train, Discord, there's a new onboarding process. Um, and the, I think the thing that I want to mention the most, so you can go up here and look at the server guide. So the server guide will kind of give you a bunch of links. Uh, talk, you know, you, obviously there's some crowdfunding stuff. If you want to join that, you can. Um, there's a code of conduct. Um, but what I would say the most important thing for me to feature here is here under channels and roles. So even if you're already in the Discord, if you've been in the Discord for a long time, go click on channels and roles because if you want to get the notifications, I might still use, I will, so I've been using at everyone, which pings everybody in the server. I am moving towards a model where I will only use that for really critical, urgent announcements, maybe no more than once a month. But for like today's live stream or a new video or just some interesting thing that I want people to test out, um, if you want to get notifications, then if you click on this little button here under the customization question, um, then that will give you the signal bell role, which um, you can get a notification. So if I were to go right now under, um, I don't know where to put this. I'll just do one, go under announcements uh, where you can see I posted, I did at everyone yesterday to post about this live stream. Uh, if I click at signal bell, hi to everyone. Whoops. Hi to everyone. Oh, my, my hands are cold. I can barely type watching right now. <laughs> I can't type watching right now. You can't even see what I'm typing because it's at the bottom there. Okay. Um, I don't need to publish that. Okay. So you will get those um, notifications. So I wanted to mention that. There's some other things. Let me just see. Uh, I, I, I made a list of them here, I think. So, ah, so we removed a bunch of old roles. We renamed, renamed some roles. So red cap is another role that you could have for yourself if you're interested. The red cap role, um, I don't know if this is just a US thing, but in Amtrak, the helpful people who helpful, help you with your luggage on the train are wear the red cap, so that's why. It's not a mag hat, I just realized. Hopefully no one gets it confused with that. Anyway, I can't believe I even like said that, but it popped into my head. Okay, uh, the red cap role is for people who are generous, helpful members of the community um, who have just been around and are, are help answering people's questions. So um, uh, track crew, uh, community caboose is for the, 
Uh, so there's some private channels for those of you who are subscribing to the membership on YouTube or Patreon. But the signal bell, that's the important one. Um, there's a new role for conductor emeritus for uh, folks that have worked on the coding train but no longer are, removed a bunch of channels, and revised the onboarding process. Okay. I think... <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to turn the heater on. <laughs> Let's put on a little music. Give myself a little break here. Wait, what happened to the music? Weird. Oh, there, now it's going. I wonder, could the clicking be related? No, this makes no sense. All right, turn the heater on. Woo! To be honest, the heater, it's less an issue it's less an issue, and it takes a bit for it to realize it needs to turn on. It's less an issue for um, you watching like a little noise in the background, and I could try putting on the noise reduction. Um, it's very loud, and it makes me start to like speak really loud, and then I start to wear out my voice, but you know. Signal bell, signal bell, signal bell rock. <laughs> That's really good. I do have a nice warm drink here. It's a little warm coffee here in the morning. People are surprised to hear that I drink coffee. They're like, isn't that dangerous for you? You're already such a spaz. Ah, the heater has come on. OK. Uh, all right. The heater is on. I could, other, I could, um, I'm just looking over here at my, um, oh, you know what? I have the noise suppression on. So the OBS noise suppression is on, so you probably don't even hear it. Wait, could that be causing? Wait a second. I think I might know what's causing the glitching. I have OBS filters, audio filters on. Anyway, I'll just investigate that later. Can everybody hear me now? You don't hear the heater. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Vivek. Thank you. Uh, and happy Holy Festival of Colors. Okay. Let's, I, let's take, well, uh, <laughs> I think, you know, my brain is starting to freeze. All right. Let's get started working on this project that I want to work on. Um, I don't have a lot of ambitions for today. My goal is to um, get a very primitive um, Visual Studio Code extension running. So I'm going to talk about what this project is and all the things I want to build for it. But to be clear, if you're trying to decide do you want to stick around for the next hour of this live stream or go on with your day, what I'm going to look at, and I've never done this before, so I have no idea how to do it. You're going to watch me try to figure this out as we go, is build a Visual Studio Code extension. Because the project that I want to make is a AI agent that codes in Visual Studio Code um, automatically without any intervention. Um, and I am doing this not for the purposes of actually making something useful but for entertainment purposes only. So um, many of you, uh, if you watch the coding train, I know this from looking at my YouTube analytics. One of the things you can see is like, what other videos are viewers of your channel watching? So I do know that many of you watch the YouTube, YouTube channel uh, Stand Up Maths from Matt Parker. And Matt Parker runs something called an evening of unnecessary uh, detail. Whoops. Uh, which is, um, he's been doing it, and here we go. Oh, that's scheduled twice, one in August as well. Oh, I, uh, <clears throat> so um, uh, Matt Parker has two of these. Uh, I didn't know about this one, so but I assume it's right if it's on the Bell House's schedule. Matt Parker is hosting two of these in Brooklyn, New York, uh, at the Bell House, 149 7th Street. It's actually very, very close to, well, 
It's not really where I live in Brooklyn, but it kind of is where I live in Brooklyn. I don't really live in Brooklyn. Anyway, the point is uh, I will be uh, performing in giant quotes um, at this uh, night, uh, Sunday, April 14th. I think it's sold out already. Maybe there's a way to get tickets uh, in the future, but if you already have tickets, um, yes, Devin, I want to make my own uh, Devin AI, but silly. Um, and so this is my idea. I think I only, I think I'm doing like a 10 minute, I think all the guests, um, it's Matt Parker hosts the evening. It's um, um, on the website. Uh, let's just click on this. Um, it says, I don't think my name is listed here, but uh, how do I, uh, sold out, follow, view event details. Let's see. But, so, but apparently Grant Sanderson from 3 Blue, 1 Brown and Emma Haruka Iwao. Now, I'm wondering, this, when I saw this name, when I saw Emma Haruka Iwao's name on this page, my head exploded with excitement. I don't know if you all know who this is, but this is the world record holder, uh, the person who has written an algorithm, a piece of software to compute the most digits of pi ever. So I'm very excited to see whatever she is presenting about. Um, and uh, my idea is to do a little competition. So imagine I'm going to set the scene for you. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> imagine um, that I'm up on stage and I have Visual Studio Code in front of me, and I, I might probably have to pick something in advance. But in a, in a sort of dream world, you get a prompt from the audience like "program a fractal tree," and then I set my coding train AI agent working and I start to work and we have a little five to 10 minute competition with a little banter back and forth to uh, create a fractal tree uh, with P5JS. So, you know, one option that I have been thinking about is to create something like, and I don't know why ShiftBot keeps going away, like ShiftBot, uh, ShiftBot is a Chrome extension and um, yeah, funny Devin AI, yes. So ShiftBot is a Chrome extension and ShiftBot can uh, kind of operates within the P5 web editor. But I thought as an experiment for this, maybe I would actually work with a Visual Studio Code extension. Um, and perhaps I could even create, so my thinking is that with Visual Studio Code, I might be able to have two window panes open one where I'm coding, one where it's coding, and two like even preview windows with like a local server. So you could watch them both. So let's talk about, um, let me just make a list. It's a little silly just to use. Well, let's create a GitHub, let's create. So I wanna make a list of the features. So that's the idea. <laughs> the idea right now is to make a Devon-like AI coding agent, but one that is, um, maybe a little bit, I don't know. I don't know what its personality should be just yet, but I want it to have personality. And I don't necessarily need it to be efficient or good at its job. It just needs to, and I probably will artificially slow it down because I want it to move at the speed of typing. Otherwise, I think it might be unfair. But I don't want it to just like spit out the code. I want it to be able to, you know, write some code, think about it, talk about what it's doing, edit the code, run it, that kind of thing. So uh, to really emulate the creative coding exploratory full process. So what I would like to build today, I kind of think that I won't be putting in, I don't think it's realistic in the next hour um, for me to sort of build, you know, I might fine tune, train a custom AI model for this, I just want to get a basic VS Code extension running that can uh, uh, type code into a text file and run that code in a preview pane. That's my starting point. Um, so I want just the skeleton of this. So let's begin. Uh, let me go to uh, terminal. <clears throat> um, 
And actually, I, I would like to do this with a local on-device model. So my goal is to not use any model in the cloud, although I, we'll see. Um, and for that, um, some options I'm thinking about are using uh, Olama, um, which is a way of running Llama locally on a Mac. Another option is using something called local AI, um, which is a, a way of hosting a bunch of lo models locally on your Mac. And then another option is to use Transformers.js, which is a way of running machine learning models in JavaScript, local on-device models. So those are, those are some of my options. Uh, so let's go to, let's start, let, we're gonna, I'm going to start this project. I need a name for it, too. Um, Whoops. No, 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 I'm not. Uh, make directory. Uh, what's a pun? What's a good pun with Devin? But would be like coding train related. <laughs> coding train related uh, pun. I don't know. Uh, I'll name it later. Uh, Devin Choo Choo. Why was it called Devin in the first place? Um, okay. So let's get this going here. So the first thing I'm going to add is a readme file. I'm so glad I turned the heat on, by the way. And I'm going to let Copilot, <laughs> GitHub Copilot, work with me here. Conductor Devin. Yeah. Conductor, yeah. Oh, dev in. That's why it's okay. Anyway, I'll we'll, I'll get a good name for it later. Um, all right. So, um, okay. So here's what I need. Um, auto edit, auto write code into uh, sketch.js. So I'm just making a list of features that I need. Um, narrate its process of writing the code. Look at errors and fix bugs, which is, that's kind of, and that's really sort of like, uh, so incrementally. Preview uh, pane to show a uh, P5JS canvas and with auto uh, refresh. Okay, so these are uh, core behaviors. Um, uh, audio, I don't know what to call it, um, interaction features. So it should. Uh, Use Whisper to listen to what I am saying. Uh, narrate and talk and answer. Narrate the process. Answer banter with me uh, using a text to speech model. Oh, it should also be able to uh, receive Canvas as input to look at what I am making. Okay, so these are all of the, uh, okay, so that's more of an AI feature, okay. And then uh, ML model, okay. So probably uh, fine tune a model. These are questions. Uh, retrieval, Rag with nature of code book or other coding train challenge examples. Um, and multi modal so it can look at the uh, canvas. Okay. Dev out. It's a zealot about commenting every single line. Uh, okay. No, so Dar, I'm. I'm just trying to get started in this project, and to be honest, like I'm going to be working on this mostly not while live streaming. 
although this is motivating me. Like, it's, this is three weeks away. This is very ambitious. <laughs> so um, really what this is is uh, bizarro, Devin. <laughs> Um, so, but this is just my list of features. So my goal for today, honestly, if I could just get a Visual Studio Code extension that's auto writing code into sketch.js, I would be happy with that. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and I'm not too worried. Um, so, um, models under consideration. Uh, so uh, Gemma, uh, transform, these are not models. I'm going to say models, frameworks. Transformers.js models, um, llama via olama, and then local AI models. These are what I'm thinking of. Um, my preference is for on device and fine-tuned model. Okay, okay. All right, so now, uh, thank you to Deepam, who is a very, uh, I think a red cap. <laughs> if not, Deepam should be uh, a wonderful, helpful Coding Train uh, member uh, who did a little bit of research for me uh, around how to get started and sent me these two links, your first extension. Now, it looks like Visual Studio Code in its documentation recommends using TypeScript, but you can also use JavaScript. So I'm really trying to decide. This is a good poll. Where do I put this poll out? Can I put it here? Let's see, can I create? I'm going to create a poll. Uh, TypeScript, TS or JS? So I'm gonna start this poll. So the and I, uh, fame, you know, I'm quite well known for not for going against whatever the poll is. Just be aware. So I, um, so the reason for me to use TypeScript would be a lot of the documentation is in TypeScript, and I, it might be good for me to learn TypeScript. The reason for me to use JavaScript is. I might move, I might be able to develop this more quickly because I know JavaScript and I don't know TypeScript. Also, if I want people from the community to be able to help develop this project, is writing it in JavaScript going to make that friendlier and easier for people? Uh, and so far, so far it looks like JS is uh, winning. I'm seeing use JS, let's avoid TypeScript madness. JS is easier, use JS. So I'm starting to feel the JS as, if you use JS, you're actually supporting TypeScript. That's interesting. So also like, is it, I guess maybe it's, is it kind of true that like, I don't have to feel so locked in right now. And if I just start with JavaScript, I'll be fine. I don't even know how to begin with this. JS plus JS doc. All right, I'll let this poll go for another minute or two. All right, well, I'm gonna read through this page. Color theme, file icon, tree view, web view, custom editors. Is custom editors what I want? I know there was also a, um, hold on. Using JavaScript, let's, let's go here. So this is a hello world minimal sample. Commands, register command, window show information message. NPM install run extension. Okay. So let's look at here. What are types of VS code? Extension. Um, uh, 
JS to avoid overhead TypeScript can be an improvement later. Okay, I like this. Okay. I and and JavaScript is winning the poll, so that's kind of what I wanted to do anyway. All right. So but I honestly like I don't even know how to get started. Uh let's see. Uh first extension. Okay. All right. So I think though I don't want to do this because this is gonna this is First use Yeoman and VS Code extension generator. Okay. I mean, I guess I could try this. If you do not want to install Yo Yeoman for later use, I I'm fine with installing it globally. So let's try this. Uh, okay. All right, let me do this. Global, oh, so I think I need to, I'm going to get rid of my package.json. I got to start over. Okay. So let's install this. Um, okay. And, okay. All right. So while that's installing, I'm going to wait here. So it looks like this is a way to create the project. And then I see. OK. Got it. Got it. OK, so this is how I'm going to run it. OK. Okay, installed. So now let's try yo code. Oh, welcome to the Visual Studio Code extension generator. Oh, I can make a JavaScript one. Yes, new extension. It is Bizarro Devin. Oh, now I need a name. I can rename it later, right? They call it Bizarro Devon. P5 De conductor Bizarro Devon. I'll just name it that for right now. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't have a description for it. Uh, creative coding. Uh, let's see. Unhinged creative. Coding AI agent. Enable JavaScript type checking? Sure. Oh, no, I didn't know. Initialize a Git repository? Yes. I'm going to use NPM. OK. Ah, I see. It made its own folder. Do you want to open the new folder with Visual Studio Code? Sure. OK, so now I have it here. And I'm going to just grab my brainstorming features and put them in the README. Do I need anything here? Okay, I can come back to this later. Let me replace that. Okay. Okay, now to run the hello world command from the command palette in the new. Okay, wait. Inside the editor, open source extension.ts and press F5. Okay. <laughs> so if I press F5, okay, so run the hello world command from the command palette. 
So it must be this. Hello world from Bizarro Devin. Hi Bizarro Devin. Mwah. All right, that's awesome. Okay, so that's working. Change the message, okay. Run developer reload window, okay. This, by the way, is definitely one of the things that I'll want to have to, you know, a lot of things that, I'm, that when you work on code-wise, you really need more monitor space because clearly I'm going to be writing the code for the extension in one window, and then I'm going to need to look at another Visual Studio Code window on a separate monitor to see it running and reloading. But it'll be a little awkward here. Um, but um, I can rename it later, famous last words, I know. Uh, so, but let's see if I can make a change. Uh, congratulations, hello world. So, choo-choo. So I'm gonna say change that to choo-choo from Bizarro Devin. Uh, and then reload window in the new window? Huh? How do I reload window? Hold on. Let's make a change. Run developer reload window in the new window. Ah, okay. Okay, and then Choo choo. Okay, and now if I change the command. Oh, I see. We've got the terminal here. Oh, let's install the extensions it wants me. Extension test runner. Okay, that seems useful. Uh, hold on. This is too much terminal window for me. And let's. Can you see my code? Let's move this over behind me so I have a little more space. And where do I create the hello world command? Where is the command name? Command R is the shortcut to reload, okay? But what I'm looking for is where is the name of the command, hello world? Okay, the command has been defined in package.json file, okay? Ah, so if I want the command to be choo-choo, I can change this here, and then in the code, I would change this here, and then command R reloads the window, and there's the command, choo-choo from Bizarro Devon. Okay, I'm up and running with an extension. Awesome. Um, so I, code comments are wonderful, but sometimes the boilerplate comments are not as helpful. Um, so I'm gonna take this out. Okay, I'm gonna leave this. So I understand what console log is. A shorter message is fine. Uh, the command has been defined in package.json. Okay. I'm going to leave those comments here. Okay. Okay. Great. Now, I prefer, here's another sort of like setup question. I prefer to use ES6 imports So these days. So if I were to add type module, 
is that going to work? Or am I am I losing the plot here by focusing on this? Um, Um, okay. All right, let's see. And then this would be this and this. Is this silly for me to do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I broke something. So maybe I shouldn't do that. Ah. Read the comments. Uh, hold on. Register command. Yeah. I think maybe I can't do that. All right. Let's back out of that. It was a nice idea. That, that's really unnecessary. Should be fine now. Let's see. So why is it? How do I, what, what did I do wrong now? How do I get it? Okay, well, I need to know how to debug this. So I need to figure out where I get the errors. So let's let's hit refresh. Choo choo. Ah, okay, it's back and working again. Okay, we're good. I forgot to reload it. Thank you for everyone telling me I forgot to reload it. Okay. So now here's another command. Debug. Oh no, look. It's in the example here, it's showing this import. So I don't know why it didn't let me do that. I can deal with that later. OK, debugging. VS Code's built-in debugging functionality makes it easy to debug extensions. Set a breakpoint. No, no, <laughs> I'm not going to use a breakpoint. Are you kidding me? <laughs> have you have you ever watched the coding train? You think I'm going to use a breakpoint? No, no, I'm just going to console log here. That's how you debug. <laughs> Where do I see the console log? Is it just I guess it's just here. Okay. So this is where I this is my debug console, which I realize it's hard for you to see. I can move this over a little bit. It's very tiny. Okay, there it is. Okay. That's good enough. Uh That's TypeScript. Okay, so maybe I can only use the ES, the import, whatever, with TypeScript. Okay, so now, what is it that I want to do? Let's look at this. Command, tree, what do I want to do? What is it, I want to write some code. Which one of these things, would this be a custom editor? Custom editors allow extensions to create fully customizable read-write editors that are used in place of VS Code's standard text editor. No. Offering alternative visual renderings. Mm, this doesn't seem right. Uh... Notebook file, chat, overview. Let's look at overview. Uh, 
virtual documents, virtual workspace, no. Source control. VSCode.window.active text editor is the current text editor. <laughs> you can use Copilot. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let's try using Copilot. Oh, first of all, what the heck? Okay. Uh, fine. Good. Uh, all right. Okay. Hey, interesting. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, who needs to read the documentation when I've got Copilot here? So it looks like I can get the active window editor. And um, I can add code to it using this. OK. Do I just do this in activate? Like, this is when you, but it, no, this is, I don't want to do it when I activate. I want to do it when the command runs. So this is when the command runs. OK, so it should go in here. So let's do that here. So let's make this its own function, like run AI agent. I just want to like put this in its own function. All right, so let's see if this works. Again, I really need a second window here. So, and actually, let's, I should have put that um, display message that there to create a text file first. Okay, so let's just do that. So let's just, okay. So if I go now, this is really a pain. Is there a, is there a key command I can use to switch between windows really fast? Because this is a pain. OK. So create a text file first. Awesome. That's what I want. OK. Whoops. Let's just put this on the desktop right now. Okay. Look at that. All right. So it's adding something. All right. Well, this is. All right. So what if. Let me just add a. Let me add a um, P5JS sketch real quick. Uh, What is going on here to close all this? No, okay, insert here this string. Uh, I need to close this parentheses, right? What am I got wrong? Editor, okay, this is a function. This two arguments, a string here, curly bracket, curly bracket, close parentheses, and then, ah, close run AI agent. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, fine. Um, okay, so let's see. Now, uh, I'm, eventually I'm going to need it to like create, ultimately what I'm going to need it to do is create the index. It should do everything, but for right now, what I'm going to do is, um, let's make a, um, let's make another folder. Oops. And then um, let's open folder. Let's manually add index.html. And let's just grab this. And then let's manually create sketch.js. So now, and I don't need the sound library or style.css. So now what I want it to do is, coming back to here, whoops, no, coming back to, it's so confusing all these different windows. Uh, this is good. Oh, so now go back to here and hit uh, refresh, run my command. Okay, now how do I get it to auto format? I just wanted to do that now. This, I don't know if this is ultimately what I'm going to want it to do, but let's see. Editor insert run auto format. Awesome. <laughs> So I'm going to execute the command format document. Now, how can I have it create a preview window? Let's see if we can do it. Like, uh, run live preview extension. Oops. Um, I don't have enough like space here. Open developer tools. That doesn't seem like that's going to work. Uh, so I'm looking at the chat here. Uh, command if exposed by that extension. OK. Um, so let's see. Do I have, let's look at this. Uh, OK. Uh, Live preview start server. Let's try that. Okay. All right, we're going to try this. <laughs> Didn't format it. And it didn't run the live preview. Did I get an error? Okay, hold on. Uh, did I, I, I probably forgot to reload. I think I forgot to reload. Is there, is there no auto reload? Ah, okay, at least I got an error now. Okay, rejected promise, live preview start server not found. So what is the command for that? Um, so how do I find, like, can I go here? Copy command ID, title. No. Uh, uh, 
copy command ID. Ah, live preview. Ah, live preview start. OK. OK, let's try this. Oh, wait, I have to, I have to reload. Okay, it's fine. Uh, all right. But why did it not? Hold on. Is this a one time issue? No, oh, add it again. It's not auto formatting, but I'm not too, that I, I'm sure I could fix that bug. Oh. OK, so what do I have so far? It's, let's review what I have so far. Right now, when I run the command, it checks to see if there is a text file. So things that need, it needs to do, uh, to do. Uh, so first, uh, to do, receive a prompt to get started, um, to do, um, create index.html and sketch.js, run live server, and then also set up the window panes properly. So how, let's see, can I move live preview above the editor? <laughs> I cannot be right. How do I get the preview window? What is this called? Like basically I want to do, I want to do, I, I think I want it to appear, I mean maybe the layout is not the most important thing right now, but I think I want it to look like this because ultimately I'm imagining creating a, like I'm going to have one computer and one projector. So I'm kind of imagining seeing this on half the screen and then another duplicate on half the, on the other half of the screen. I'm typing over here. The agent is typing on the other side. That's what I'm imagining. Probably figuring out the layout stuff right now isn't super important, and I could do that. So I'm trying to, what would be, what, what is something that I should work on next? Um, like maybe I should just try getting an AI model in here to generate the code based on a prompt. Let me look at my features ideas. So I have this. Okay, well I need to, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to have it have some kind of back and forth. So, um, and that seems old. Uh, so maybe I should create some type of time loop is what I should be working on next. And I, by the way, I only have about 20 minutes left. And so, um, uh, actually I should probably just go for about 10, you know what I should, I'm going to wrap up soon. I'm going to file some issues, and I'm going to talk about uh, how I might like people to contribute to this if you're interested. So let's, let's do a, a couple things. One is, let me, let's see if I can, I just haven't decided if I'm going to use transformers.js, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant to just add that in there. But let's think about this. So I'm getting the active editor window. Ah, 
Ah, VS Code window, I see. How can I get a list of windows? Where do I see that? Oh, here it is. So this might be hard for you to see. I'm going to try to zoom into it. So this is the list of windows. Document, edit, hide, selection. So somehow I'm going to have to like look through the documentation and figure out how to get the preview pane window and arrange them. But that I'm not going to work on right now. What I would like to do is figure out, like, should I just use set interval right now? Let's try using set interval. No, that's not. I guess JavaScript is kind of multi-threaded on its own, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh. But this could be an async function. Yeah. So I could await certain things. Let's just try this. Uh, OK. So. Why is this an error? Oh, OK, that's fine. Um, I just want to try this. Oh. So I'm going to need to have, there's going to be like API calls or, or whatever. So I just want to see like await, pause agent, two seconds. Oh, OK, hold on. I see. Hold on. This should be, this should have been outside of this. Just curious. And then. Well, let's see how this does. So basically, I wanted to create this. I'm just testing this out. It's going to write a little bit of code, start the live preview, then uh, pause for three seconds, then add the draw function. Let's see if this works. Just trying to understand. So let's turn this off, delete this, this here, refresh, run the command. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Oh, it added it. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, hold on. Oh, because I used the position. Okay, hold on, let's fix that. Oh, no. Do I have to make, how do I get the current position? OK, can, will that work? Did it hallucinate that? Or is that actually correct? OK. So back to this. Close this. Delete this, refresh, run my command. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. 
Yes, okay. Now, I really wanted to add those characters one character at a time. I know this is silly, but this is important to me. So I'm actually going to, uh, Always use this. Can I, will this actually work? Uh, okay. Uh, insert. Four. Like, I'm going to try adding it one at a time. And then await, pause agent. Yeah, okay, so let's try this. Oh, and this needs to be async. So I'm just seeing now if I can add the code in like it's typing it. Okay. And just out of curiosity, can I put in line breaks? I'm just curious. Okay, let's see if this works. Um, Okay, and Bruno's asking, is it safe to write one character at a time while auto-reloading the sketch? Yeah, so I'll definitely have to watch out for that. The other thing is I could not, I could just use a different local server that's not live preview and refresh the sketch automatically, like, and have that be a piece of the code. But let's just see if this works. So <laughs> let's go here. So I need to close this. Oh, insert. Oh, no, I forgot to refresh. I forgot to refresh. Refresh. Wait, what just happened? It didn't work. Ah, uh, okay, because this. All right, hold on. Let's take all this out. Let's take this out for right now. So I'm probably going to have to, I'm, I wonder if edit, do I really have to call editor.edit? I wonder if you can't call insert multiple times in here. But anyway, let's just try this one more time. I just want to understand how this works. Yeah, rejected promise. Edit is only valid while callback runs. Got it. So I think what I would need to do is... This has to happen here. Ah, uh, yeah. So this happens out here. I can refactor this to like write this in a more thoughtful way, but let me just see right now what would happen. Um, okay. So this, I think this might work, right? Because I'm going to do one character at a time in the loop here. So refresh, run. Yeah! <laughs> awesome. Okay. Now, I love that. Okay. So uh, now, 
if I put in, let's put in live preview here, and let's add just for fun, uh, let's add this in here. Uh, and also, um, uh, just want to, okay, let's do this one more time. Okay. Uh, so now I go here. And I refresh, and I run the command again. <laughs> oh, I put fill zero. <laughs> I forgot to fill the background with white. OK, one more time. OK, this is. Now, how do I get it? I really wanted to run that auto format, but I don't know why. It's let's try having it run that here, and then just just to finish this off. This is going to be the last thing I'm going to do, and then I'll kind of talk about. Okay. Here's my coding agent. It's coding some hard-coded P5 sketch. Yay! OK, but it doesn't run. I, I've done something wrong in terms of executing this format command, but I can figure that out later. OK, so let me put this on uh, GitHub now. Um, let's put it in coding train, uh, bizarro Devon. It's going to be public, uh, create repository. Um, okay. So now, oh, where am I here? I don't know where I am. Oh, I'm in Bizarre. OK. Ah, OK. OK. Uh, I guess I want all of this stuff. Let me look at Git. Is there a Git ignore? Let me also add DS store. Um, Oh, uh, and I need this. Oh, seriously? Okay, great. Okay. Okay, so. I am uh, wrapping up the stream for today. Uh, I have uh, successfully created a proof of concept. Bizarro Devon uh, needs a title, needs a name. Um, and I would welcome any of you to contribute to this project. So for example, um, here are some things like uh, when um, create p5.js sketch. When the command is first run, it should create uh, index.html and sketch.js um, uh, and sketch.js. Okay. Uh, so this is an issue. Uh, another thing would be uh, 
organizing uh, window, uh, editor windows. The extension should uh, focus on sketch.js and the preview pane and put and place the preview pane above the sketch.js editor. Okay. Um, so I'm just filing some issues of things that I'm thinking about that people could contribute to. Um, and uh, development window is a very lightweight editor without any extensions installed. Ah, okay, got it. Um, so uh, run code formatter, fix bug where format uh, run format document after some code has been added. Um, okay. And uh, let's see. Um, okay. So, um, all right. So basically, I'm going to continue to work on this. Um, I would. My kind of thinking is to try to get it up and running and sort of built in a thoughtful, scalable way without the AI models first. So even if, like, as a starting point, what I might imagine doing is just putting, like, the answer to what it's going to build in a local text file and have it basically, like, basically creating a script. So I, I think actually, so this is what I think would make sense. like. Create a script. Create a script and run that script. So basically, write into a JSON file a script that, that includes hard-coded narration, P5JS sketch, fractal tree maybe. Uh, this will show, and once this runs and plays, plays out, the script will be replaced with an AI model TBD. So this is kind of how I'm imagining building this. So I might create like a JSON file that's kind of a script that basically says like, first say this, then write this code, then say this, then write this code. And if I can just watch that play out in the editor while I'm also coding in the editor, then I'm ready to have the AI model come in and replace the script. So I think there's a lot of work to be done before I even bring in whatever model I might choose to use. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to... Uh, finish up for today. Um, thank you for joining this live stream. I have about five minutes left. Oh, here's an important thing for me to tell you. One of the reasons, well, there's a lot of reasons why I need to finish at noon, <laughs> personally. But um, one of the reasons why I wanted to finish at noon is because uh, I want to plug two other creative coding video makers and streamers. So uh, in five minutes, I'm going to send you all to Raphael's Twitch stream. But before I even get there, I just want to mention um, I've been following, uh, let's see if I can go to YouTube, um, uh, Pat Vera's channel. So if you're looking for more coding tutorials and creative coding examples, Pat, um, I, I found on YouTube uh, recently. I am actually subscribed to Pat. It's just not showing that because I'm currently not signed into YouTube, in case people are like, why are you not subscribed? Um, but um, if we go to Pat's channel, All you can you see start that with. they are releasing a ton of videos, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you're looking for somebody who was kind of like, I mean, I feel like this was me, I'm not, I mean, Pat is a completely different person, so don't get this twisted or confused. But 10 years ago when I was starting to do this, I was kind of making three or four videos a week and doing it in a very agile way. Um, and I think that's actually really a wonderful way to create um, coding tutorials and videos and engage with the community. And Pat is really doing that. So if we look 
at Pat's recent videos. There's just like two days ago, four days ago, six days ago. And you'll actually find like a lot of topics that I have also explored. So I think like I have a video on the Menger sponge, but I assume if you watch Pat's video on the Menger sponge, you'll get a different perspective. Pat also released a video on slime molds. Um, this is actually one that I, I, uh, I want to do myself. So um, I think it's sort of interesting to have multiple takes on these different algorithms. So I really wanted to just mention Pat's channel. Everyone should subscribe, watch those videos. Um, thank you, Pat, for bringing a whole new perspective and energy and way of doing things to this YouTube creative coding space. Um, so uh, now, oh, and uh, Raphael is in the chat. So that was me plugging Pat's channel. The other uh, person, and there's plenty of people you should be following. I'm sure I'm missing people, but um, why am I blanking on? Oh, Tim Rodenbecker is terrific and does a lot of videos and courses. But if I go to twitch.tv, I think Sable Rafe, Sable Raf. I don't know why I always insist on saying Rafe, even though I know it's Raphael. I'm sorry, Raphael, I can't get it right. Uh, Raphael streams on Twitch on a very regular good schedule. I don't know, what's the topic today, Raphael? You're in the chat. Um, but if I go to schedule, um, uh, we are in a Creative Coding Challenge Review. Um, every Sunday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. I don't have a way of sending you the, there's no uh, transfer, <laughs> auto transfer. What do they call that, a raid? But um, as I wrap up now in the next two minutes, uh, Mesoamerican design is the theme of um, the challenge. Um, creative coding, weekly creative. Ah, my brain is completely melted right now. I cannot speak words anymore. So if you're not done with your consumption of internet creative coding streaming, and you want to see somebody with much better audio <laughs> and a professionalism <laughs> uh, that I uh, lack, <laughs> uh, you should definitely switch over and uh, go to uh, uh, Raphael's Twitch channel. So twitch.tv Sable Raph. All right, any last questions in the chat? Uh, I'll put on my little music. Uh, I would be uh, happy to answer any last questions. If you would like to, so if you would like to contribute to my Bizarro Devon Creative Coding AI agent that I just published, the thing that I would ask that you do is that before you open a pull request or implement any features, please open an issue and propose something you want to work on or you know write a comment to one of these things so you can see here we already have this um, that way i just want to reduce somebody working on a feature that's not really going to align with something that i'm thinking about that i want for this project or duplicating work um, so but again you can also just i don't mean like this is the thing that i'm going to make <laughs> so i'm not not requiring um but for that okay so awesome job uh thank you mini jimmy uh thank you digital studio thanks uh rafael two songs am i playing two songs at the same time i don't know what's going on oh yeah what is going on oh it's because Oh, oh, it's because I've got Raphael's music going. <laughs> Remember I used to do a lot of like dancing. I got, I, I turned 50 and I thought maybe I have to take this more seriously. <laughs> How's this for taking this more seriously? Okay, oh, I also I have this hip problem. I think I need to get an MRI. I'm doing physical therapy, stretching every day. I'm a little bit worried that I have this like a bulging disc thing going on. I'm supposed to run the Brooklyn Half Marathon. I signed up for it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Anyway, this is not what you want to uh, hear about. I was looking for any questions. All right, it's noon. Everybody should go to Raphael's stream. I'll see you later. Have a great day. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay, uh, look out for the next coding challenge video. Join the Discord, all of the above. 
and see you next time on The Coding Train. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. Song, this dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. This dot. I'm gonna do the this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. The this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> I'm gonna say once again. Here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward to our team. Coordinate song. The forward to Cartesian coordinate song. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens, thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that, and look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a, this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, 
We're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. 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 Dust the dime, yeah. Ha <laughs> <laughs>